Welcome back for another episode of Reason for Truth. I'm your host, Stephen Garofalo. Appreciate you being back with us. Today, we're going to cover the problem of postmodernism. Fancy term. Don't let it intimidate you. We live in a postmodern world, folks. I'm going to explain to you what that is. We live in a postmodern world. That's a fact where we're being told by friends, family, and government, in the media especially, and in some cases, even the church, that knowledge, truth, and morality are not absolute. Think about that for a minute. If it's relative, how can we know anything's true? Postmodern belief holds uh, this, this, what they believe is true is that, listen, that truth and morality are something that are relative. And it's defined and it's dependent on the community and the cultural norms and trends of the day. That's not true. So in other words, another country, another culture can believe something's true or that it's right or wrong because that's part of their culture. That's, but that's different than God's ultimate moral standard. And the fact that God is truth is a standard, right? We, in other words, we don't define truth by how we feel or what we see. That's what we're going to talk about. Welcome to Reason for Truth, where the truth comes first and the reasons come last, but where we're always in constantly learning because when we stop learning, we stop teaching, or at least stop teaching well. Today's truth is that truth is absolute. And while truth can be affirmed by our five senses, right? Smell, taste, touch, you get it, sight. Um, it does not define or determine what the truth is. As such, truth is not defined by any person, people, group, government, media, or religious sect, but only by God himself. Truth is what the truth is, and what corresponds to reality is saying it the way it is. It is what it is. Today, I'm going to show you that, you know, really what postmodern believes, why it's a problem, and really provide you with the tool through Equipped Academy, by the way, .com. Check that out to help really defend your faith against postmodern beliefs, especially getting in and damaging faith that's based on truth that is the truth. And really, that, that series as well, the Equipped Academy, is going to help you prevail against a postmodern world that's devouring the souls of our children and, and our nation. Now, listen, American theologian Stanley Grenz defines postmodernism, by the way, as a reaction to the modern mindset in which knowledge is not objective according to postmodern thinking. Truth is entirely dependent on the community in which it resides, and God and human reason are not the sole faculty for determining it. It's pretty strong. As a consequence, we have a celebration of the local at the expense of the universal, which leads to a great sense of diversity and pluralism. As a result, postmoderns denounce the pretense of those who claim the view that comes from a transcendent uh, viewpoint, right? Meaning beyond and above the range of normal or merely human experience. That's God. That's what God gives us, and which, listen, which they are able to speak imperiously to and on behalf of all mankind. That's pretty, that's, listen, that's pretty strong. I address it in some lay terms here better in my first book called Right for You But Not for Me, A Response to Moral Relativism. Get that on Amazon, or you can get that as well at equippedresources.com, different site, Tried Stone Publishing Company. And I cover there a little bit more about how postmodernism came to be. And in that book, I quote the famous American rapper Eminem. Yeah, you got to go with the deep theologians here. And Eminem said this, and I don't have anything against Eminem, I'm just quoting him. He said, nobody can criticize me, and I'm paraphrasing him. The book gives the actual quote. He says basically that nobody can criticize him for his actions, okay, unless they have walked in his shoes. In other words, you have to have a mother who was a drug addict. I think she may have been a prostitute. She certainly was sexually very deviant or promiscuous. Uh, you have to be on drugs. You have to be really uh, pretty much ignored him to the sense that I would say is a sense of form of abuse. But you can't you can't criticize him unless you've been through what he's been through. That's right. You can't criticize his music lyrics, his style, any of his comments, anything he said. What he was saying simply is that until you've experienced my life and lived in my physical, you know, through my physical five senses, uh, listen, you can't criticize me or my actions, whether they're right or wrong, true or false, good or bad. This is postmodern thinking. I don't think Eminem set out to go, well, I'm a postmodernist. I just, just think all of us are affected at this one point, you know, or another with it. And we have to be able to identify it and then make sure we're not thinking and moving towards a postmodern belief. Especially if we have our children, we have to make sure that we begin to train them and show them the dangers and the false sense, uh, the pretense of what postmodern 
beliefs. Belief is. Okay. To help us better understand postmodern thinking, theologically speaking, we have to look at human reason in relation to the existence of God apart from and not really subject to the limitations of our human senses. In postmodernism, the material universe is rejected. Let me repeat that. In postmodernism, the material universe is rejected. Speaking of God's transcendence, okay, this means simply that according to the postmodernism, you know, listen, God's objective truth and moral absolutes cannot be proclaimed outside of human experience. Remember those five senses. The problem within the body of Christ is that all too often we see postmodernism as a passing phase in life, right? Oh, they're going to grow out of that. Pastor and author Brian McLaren he believes postmodernism is not simply a phase or a stage of life, as many parents today believe. They say, hey, my children are sowing their oats, and they're going to return to their faith when, you know, when they're ready. Uh, listen, we look at the Woodstock event. We say, well, that was, that was just an event. Well, that was more than an event. That it's really was a really jump for the postmodern thinking. You know, there was a massive shift during that era in the 60s from Western logical Christian worldview thinking to an Eastern relevant, uh, relative mindset. Postmodernism is, is now leading and shaping the way of people all over the country and all over the world. How the young people and old people alike and in the middle are process information. That's how we get so much fake, fake news. That's how we believe in so much fake news is because we don't have critical thinking. We've been say, listen, I can see it. I could smell it. You know, listen, I, I was doing a radio interview with Kirby Anderson one time. He asked a question I, about how do we know truth and, and relativism. And I said, well, you come into my house. And, you, and he was talking about the five senses. And you come in. Oh, man. Wow. My wife makes a mean apple pie. Come in and go and hit the kitchen. Make, he said, where's the bathroom? I'm down here on the left. Go down there. And all of a sudden, to your horror, you see that there's an apple pie air freshener in the bathroom. Now, you want to impress me? Eat the plastic right? Dead baby, we'll, we'll talk about this relativism. It's not an apple pie. It's a plastic air freshener. It's probably going to make you sick if not kill you if you eat it. So you, I don't really want you to eat it. You see where I'm going, where I'm going with this. All right. So at the end of the day, the way that people you know, process information and view the world, it's fast becoming the dominant epistemology of our day. Epistemology is a fancy word for the study of knowledge, or more simply put, how we know anything in terms of relation to knowledge. The end result is that one accepts, he believes, he lives by an ultimate, uh, ultimately determines what they see, what they, through their senses, determines truth, determines their truth, or what they think is truth. And it's based on not an objective or the objective, but it's based on the subjective. This means a uh, now, listen, that what we see, touch, hear, smell, and feel, and emotionally determine, that becomes our truth, which can be very misleading, and more often than not is. See, what we see on TV, hey, well, I saw it, well, how do we know? I saw it on the internet. Well, wh what was the source? Well, I saw it on TV, it's got to be true. Hey, I heard it in church. I'm not talking from your pastor, someone said something, well, even with your pastor. Any good pastor, and my pastor's a great pastor, Dr. John Monroe, they'll tell you, don't take my word for it. Go to the Bible, read it for yourself. See, all other realms of life, same thing. To be real, let's notice that the media and many authoritative bodies in corporate America and government, they consider their message and mandates that need to be followed, who must be followed, based, they, let's listen, when they speak, it's absolute truth. Why is that? You never notice that? It's the absolute truth and it's morally the, it has to be followed. This is right. This is wrong. You hear that message from the authorities all the time, but they'll tell you, listen, at the end of the day, don't do this because it's relative. You can't say this is right or wrong unless it's convenient for those in control. Interesting how that, that works, right? They may, they mandate that the rest of us though, the rest of the world abandon their absolute truth as an obstacle for carrying out the mandates and desires of the leading authorities by, you know, their desires. In other words, they hold the belief that all knowledge, it's epistemology, if it could be known at all, is based on the opinion and of their opinion, and which can be logically justified through truthful facts. You know, that's another thing. They don't want you to go there. It's just, listen, do what I say, not what I do. All right, I'll leave it at that. They proclaim knowledge and truth is relative. Postmodern thought proclaims that truth is dependent on the five senses, despite the fact that our five senses can really deceive us. This is a product of postmodernism, folks, and it's ravaging our children, our family, our culture, our country, and the world. This is to be expected if, as we move further away from God. Let's look at the Word of God, which in 2 Timothy 
4.3 says this, For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. The NIV, I like the way it says it. A little bit better. It says it this way. That was the ESV. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. In other words, despite the plain and obvious fact and truth, better yet, the truth being evident, truth is to be defined and determined by each individual or by the authorities. Hey, what's your, it's your truth for you. That's your moral standard. But notice how when something goes down, it's not, not politically expedient for one group or the other. All of a sudden, it becomes moral and right. Interesting how that happens. Very interesting. You Listen, same standard of morality and truth holds true for all cultures, all families, businesses, and government authority. That's the bottom line. And the media. In application with the compilation of really relative uh, philosophical and theological thought combined with the internet, you take all the stuff, you put it in the one big box, brought together, increased globalization, and as a result, through the use of technology and postmodern message, through technology, these events and these statements, they go out into the world in one little spot and they travel all over the world, influencing people worldwide. So it in turn molds the way that people think, understand God, religion, and how they see all things on a global level. Some people see that as good. It can be good. Great way to share your faith. The internet's a good and bad place and it fuels a sense of global interconnectedness all over the planet. As a result, postmodernism is creating new dependencies and thriving markets, by the way. And it's blurring the thought that God created each person, by the way, as an individual person. As a result, cultures, religions, and national identities are intermingling and melding and sometimes blurring. There are nations and cultures, by the way, who don't tolerate globalist, you know, globalism in their national identity. A couple of those are China, <laughs> I tell you. I don't think Russia does that. And so you have different, you have a lot of Middle Eastern countries that don't do that. Go tell the Muslim nations that, hey, you start thinking this way, it's not going to go too well. Now, I'm not saying postmodernism is not affecting these cultures because they are. You know, you can't hide everything on the Internet. and No government can stop everything from getting in. But those, it's, understand, it's interesting to understand what it means to really to have postmodern thought affect your whole culture. Western culture, on the other hand, listen, we daydream sometimes, daydream about heaven and earth, which won't happen here on earth. Not yet, because, it, listen, not everyone is a follower of Jesus Christ. So be sure multiculturalism will be around in heaven, but under the federal headship of Jesus Christ. People from every nation, color, continent, and culture will be present in heaven as one body of believing Christians. There'll be only one God, though. Only one biblical theology, that's the truth, and it's not relative. And that's the word of God. And at that time, listen, sinful mankind and Satan and his demons will no longer have any influence or effect on God's people or in reality. That game will be over. Hope this helps make sense of postmodernism. Listen, I addressed the consequences uh, of postmodern in a recent episode of Reads for Truth. I did that. You want to check that episode out. It was called uh, God's Sin Quota. It just talks about where we get off on a, you know, on a tangent of, of postmodernism to the point where we begin to sin. God then uh, tolerates that sin for so long before he brings judgment upon people, groups of people, and nations. See? You don't want to miss that. I'll put a little link to that on the bottom. It's called God's Sin Quota, and I'll, I'll list that for you. Listen, as a solution, a good way to combat postmodernism from devouring your children, your family, even your own faith, and your community, and your thinking is to engage in this new online video training series, and you can. Uh, it's called EquippedAcademy.com. Go there direct, or go to ReasonForTruth.org or .Bible. Just hit the Equipped Academy tab. If you hit the Equipped uh, Resources, there's a book and a workbook that goes along with that. I, I think you will find that especially helpful. Now, listen, next week I'm going to speak really to postmodern's impact on morality, moral relativism in the form of moral relativism. So you don't want to miss that episode. So if you don't want to do that, listen, take my advice, subscribe, and spit Sicilian hook, bam, smash that little alert bell. You have to be listening on podcast. Make sure you do the same, right? Just go down there and hit the subscription button. You're not going to miss anything. Thank you for joining us today. I'll see you at the next Reason for Truth episode. I'm your host, Stephen Garofalo, and this is your Reason for Truth for today. <music>